In the previous clip, we left off at the point that we should not feel restricted during menstruation when we cannot perform Salat and Siyam. And I promise to tell you what you can do during those days and whether you should recite the Quran. So here we go. Shall I not tell you about the best of your deeds? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked his Sahaba, a deed which is most pure in the sight of your Lord, a deed which raises you more in status, a deed which is better for you than giving gold and silver in charity, a deed which is even better than meeting your enemy, you striking their necks and they striking yours. Yes, O Messenger of Allah, the Sahaba replied in eagerness. Dhikrullah, said the Prophet, remembering Allah. Dhikr of Allah is no small thing, my sister. It can immensely increase your rank with Allah and bring you closer to Him. Once, Allah's Messenger وسلم, remarked, The Mufridun have gone ahead. Who are the Mufridun? asked the Sahaba. Those men and women who remember Allah much, replied the Prophet. And dhikr can be done anywhere, anytime, even if you simply persist in reciting the adhkar which have been narrated for specific times, morning, evening, going to bed, upon waking up, eating, drinking, getting dressed, entering and leaving the home, and so on. Even if you just stick to these, you have gained a lot of rewards. And if you are concerned about missing out the extra rewards during these days, you should make it a point to spend some time making dhikr. The time you spend every day for the obligatory salat, you can spend it for dhikr during these days. And let me tell you, if you choose your adhkar wisely, you can gain exceptionally great rewards. Ummul Mu'mineen Juwairiya radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out in the morning as she was busy with the Fajr prayer. And when he returned in the forenoon, he found her sitting in the same place. Have you been here since I left you? asked the Prophet. Yes, she replied. Thereupon the Prophet said, I recited four words three times after I left you. And if they were to be weighed against all what you have recited since morning, they will be heavier. So what are those words? Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Adada khalkihi, warida nafsihi, wazinata arshihi, wamidada kalimatihi. Allah is free from imperfection. And I praise Him as many times as the number of His creatures, as much as it pleases Him, as much as the weight of His throne, as much as the ink that may be used in recording the words for His praise. Memorize adhkar like these and you won't feel like missing out on the rewards at all. And repeating these words is not the only form of dhikr. Every beneficial word that your tongue utters brings you closer to Allah. Seeking ilm, reading books, because we get more uninterrupted time. So let's make an effort in these days to understand the deen of Allah. Because the more your ilm, the more valuable your deeds are. And all the many beneficial ways of achieving rewards that are open to others are also open to you. So now we know that if Allah has excused us from praying Salat, He has not kept us from achieving rewards or from connecting with Him. As for reading the Quran, there is a difference of opinion amongst the scholars. Reading as in saying it with your tongue. As far as looking at the text and reading it in your mind, like if the Quran is kept in front of you, you can look at it and read it in your mind because that is not considered recitation. You might want to do that, for example, when reading tafsir. This is permissible. The difference of opinion is about reading it with your tongue moving. And the majority of the scholars say it is prohibited, not allowed. Sheikh Ibn Luthaymin Rahimahullah said that since we know the scholars to have a difference of opinion in this regard, it is best that you don't recite the Quran except when there is a need. 
such as you are a teacher and you need to teach your students you are a student and you need to recite for an examination you need to seek ruqya through quranic verses or you fear that you might forget what you have memorized now if you require to read these verses from a mushaf that is the book which contains only the text of the quran it does not have any translation or tafsir that's a mushaf so if you need to recite the quran looking at the mushaf you should have a barrier such as a clean cloth or gloves or you can turn the pages with a stick or a pen because allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no one should touch the mushaf except in a state of purity apart from the mushaf you can touch the books of tafsir even books which contain few quranic verses also you can read the quran from modern devices like mobiles and laptops because these do not fall under the same ruling of mushaf now for the misconceptions such as not taking a bath or not cutting nails during these days these have no basis in the teachings of islam you can comb your hair cut your nails take a bath it's perfectly fine also you can apply henna during these days alhamdulillah no such restrictions so those are the do's and don'ts of menstruation in the next clip how can you make sure your menstruation is over and what about the yellowish discharge see you in the next clip stay connected to the striving muslima blog where we nurture our islamic identity and build confidence